Welcome to my review of Pokemon Horizons Episode 4. So, uh, I missed something uh, past week, so... Last week, we found out that the Brave Asagi and Revolt Rising Vault Tackers are going to be heading to the Paldea region to go meet Liko's parents and collect their pay. So that's pretty cool. We're going to meet Liko's parents soon, hopefully. And also, a flag that had been lost during the whole Thunderstorm fight, like first in the first two episodes of Horizons, had like washed up on this one remote island in the Kanto region. And that's where we get to see our other protagonist, Roy, kind of like pick it up and get excited and everything. So Liko wakes up on the Brave Asagi. She's like still getting used to being there. And that's when she finds out that she's, well, got some jobs to do. She's like on the observation deck. She's got some food for Pokemon on the ship. And the Rising Vault Tactics are going to have to be uh, landing to go do some repairs on this like one remote island. Uh, I should have mentioned that when Liko woke up, Fue Coco was singing and she like kind of went out to go see what the noise was and like that scared Fue Coco away. And really this whole episode is kind of about Fue Coco anyway because, you know, Fue Coco gets lost, it like falls off the Brave Asagi. It was actually Fue Coco being a fan of Charizard that caused it to fall off a ship as it had started to try and chase Charizard as it flew away with Freed. And just in general, a lot of this episode is kind of like motivated by Fue Coco leaving the ship. You know, you had Liko, she's the one going off to explore the island to find it. You've got Roy, he's the one like bonding with Fue Coco this episode. So Liko kind of takes it upon herself to go and like find out what's up with Fue Coco, where it is and everything. In the meantime, Fue Coco's like kind of away looking for food, where it like steals some from a nest. We also have Roy, who's kind of like going about his day, like his life on the island. He's like going and interacting with Pokemon. He's like got to take his classes and everything. Where he finds out that all his other classmates are kind of like catching their Pokemon. They've got their own goals. Like one wants to take on gyms, one wants to take on totem Pokemon, which is based. So Roy's waiting for the chance where he can get his Pokemon partner and begin his journey. And then that's when he reveals that he has this one ancient Pokeball to the class, which is like what he calls it, but I mean, that looks way better than the Hisui Pokeball, so. And he kind of wants to discover a mystery behind the ancient Pokeball, so he needs a partner Pokemon for that. Liko and Sprigatito are kind of like on the island, like looking like where, like Fue coco has been. They run into the nest where there was like loads of berries that Fue coco ate. And that's when a bunch of Pokemon like see her and think that she was the one that ate all their food. So she starts getting chased down. Meanwhile again, Roy's just kind of like going about his day. He finds out his secret base has been ransacked. We saw that was by Fue Coco. And that's when he also hears like Fue Coco singing. So he kind of goes up to it and well that Fue Coco gets scared off. It kind of runs away. He saves it from falling down a cliff. And then that's when he could try and get Fue Coco to kind of open up and be like maybe a bit braver I guess about it singing. Because like, he says he really likes Fue Coco's singing and everything. It's great. And then that's when he reveals the uh, Rising Vault Tackler's flag to Fue Coco as well. Just a little bit of... A little bit of bonding there between them. It's really cool. I like it. But, like Fue Coco is also having like Roy sing alongside him. Because like Roy's being really supportive of Fue Coco. It's really cute to watch. I really like Roy's personality. Well, he's excitable but he's also... Like into like helping out others. It's really great. It's kind of very chilling that Liko and Sprigatito kind of like run by and the ancient Pokeball and Pendant react to each other. So Roy does his best to save Liko and kind of like pulls her aside. They jump through the trees. That's when he kind of introduces himself, you know, shows her the ancient Pokeball. Tells her that there's a trainer that used to be an ancient adventurer and that's a trainer that Roy wants to be like because they took on Pokemon from the Legends. That sounds cool to him. And that's kind of something I find crazy, because it feels like I have a little bit more direction for what Roy wants to be than uh, Liko already. That's fine, I guess Liko will find out what she wants to do in time. I and mean, then that's when the rest of the Pokemon just end up kind of ambushing Liko and Roy. Sprigatito fight, tries and fight off with Leafage, but I mean, doesn't really do too much because there's a lot of bug and poison types there. Fikoko tries to use an Ember, but it can't. And then they all get captured by String Shot. Kind of in the background of this episode, Freed has been like on the island trying to source like local bits to do their repairs on their ship. Including like meeting this old man that we know is Roy's grandpa as well. And eventually Freed kind of like runs into like Liko and Roy and he sees that they're in trouble. So Charizard's ready to just like use his fire attacks on all the Pokemon there because they're all weak to fire. But Freed kind of like says like no, like fire will make things worse in this situation. 
So him and Cap basically go and like dance around the Pokemon as they're firing off string shots. And kind of like trap him, calm him all down. And then he feeds them to like calm him down, you know? Because like obviously they're hungry. Roy also here kind of recognises that Freeb just isn't an ordinary Pokemon trainer. He's a professor. Which, I mean, we knew, but I don't think it's been mentioned in the show yet. So that's cool to see. And before Freed and Liko can head off, Roy and Liko get a plan to, like, replenish all the berries of these Pokemon. Like, make them happy, right the wrong that's happened to them. It's very cute. So Freed and Liko end up leaving on Charizard. And kind of that night, Liko's thinking about the pendant. Roy's looking at the ancient Pokeball. And then that's when we find out that the explorers are approaching in a submarine. And that's really the end of the episode. So I thought this was really cool because this is a proper introduction to Fue Coco and to Roy, of course. I kind of like that they've taken their time in introducing Roy as well. You know, obviously, Liko's a new character, so we have to be introduced to her. So we've had a good bit of time with her. We've got had a good bit of time with um, Roy as well already. And sorry, as of recording this one, we've had episode 5 launch as well. So I kind of know where this is going. But, like, this set up, like, a quite a good, like, continuation point. So, I'd say, like, seeing Fue Coco singing as well, like, really does make me feel like we will be seeing Skeledurge in this series. I, I know, like, with starter Pokemon in the anime, it's like, they can either basically stay in first form, they can become their final form, or they can, very rarely, I think they'll stay in middle form. But, yeah, so, we're already, like, starting with Roy and Fue Coco, like, singing it it's just a really cute trait and you know Roy is so eager to like get in and help out Fue Coco it's wonderful and it's really cool seeing like Liko take the initiative here as well because like she's the one like going off a ship she's the one like running away from Pokemon it's really fun to see like she's grown a lot already and that's wonderful eager to see how much she grows like throughout the rest of the series so it's a really fun episode and I hope you enjoyed <laughs>